there would be an inner radii, R1, and there would be a outer radius, R2, initial, and then it would grow as a function of length. And remember, the uh, current is flowing radially outward. Since of a cylindrical uh, resistor, it would be uh, rho over 2 pi L, ln R2 over R1. So how can we apply this if the, resi uh, if the radius is changing? So let's say the inner radius stays the same, R1. Let's make R1 equal 0.1 millimeters. Let's say the material between the two um, wires is uh, filled with copper. So this co of copper is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 8. And uh, let's say the length of the wire is equal to 0.5 meters. And let's say the outer radius here R2 final. So let's say R2 initial is equal to, um, let's make this 0.3 millimeters, and R2 final is equal to point, so what will that be? Let's say, just for the sake of, we could make this any kind of function. Let's say it's a straight line function increasing linearly. So uh, the, we'll make the final radius 0.6 millimeters, okay? So how would we approach this? So here's what we're gonna argue. We're gonna argue that these resistors, dr and dl, so this is the length, we're gonna split it up into little disks like this, dl, But each one has a uh, each one has same inner radius R1. The outer radius is changing, so these are all parallel to each other. Okay, you have another resistor. Why are they parallel to each other? Because the inner wire and the outer wire at it are at a certain potential, so the potential difference between the two ends of the resistors are the same, but they have different currents flowing. Okay. So remember, the circuit looks something like this. If I connect the positive terminal of the battery to the inner and the negative terminal to the outer wire, so the current will flow from the inner to the outer, and more current will flow in the thinner one because uh, and more current will flow through the thinner one because the resistance of that is gonna be less. As you go that way, there's gonna be less current flowing. So it's basically like a bunch of resistors that are in parallel to each other. So how do the resistors in parallel add? One over the resistance, one over dr total is equal to the sum of one over dr, dr sub i. So the sum of all of these, okay? is equal to one over dr. So we're gonna now integrate this. So you're gonna get two pi dl divided by rho, and then ln r2 over r1, okay? So now, how do I get the total resistance? Well, I integrate this, I integrate this, and uh, you have here, um, 2 pi L over rho ln R2 over R1. My DL, I can call that my DX, so a little thickness DX. <coughs> the ln of, um, so we have 1 over R total is equal to 2 pi over rho, and then you're going to have integral DX, you're going to have ln of R2 minus ln of R1, R1 is not changing, R2, so if we put the x axis here, R2 will be basically like my y function. 
What's the distance from here to here describing the, the length from here to here, the width? So this is kind of like when we did regular resistors. We have to come up with a function y equals mx plus b. So I could make this a square function, any kind of arbitrary exponential function. Uh, so now in, in this case, we know that when x equals 0, y is equal to this one. So we have y equals mx. So this is the y-intercept, 0 0.0003. I'm changing it to uh, meters. Okay, so what would my slope be? Well, when x equals to 0.5 meters, that's the total length, uh, y is equal to 0.6 uh, millimeters. So that's the final radius. So 0 0.6, well, let's make this 0 0.0006 is equal to m times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.0003, okay? So what is the slope there? 0 0.0006 minus 0 0.0003, it's going to give me 0 0.003 divided by half. The slope is going to come out 6 times 10 to the negative 4, which is 0 0.0006. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4. So now, that's my general radius function. I have to integrate that general function. So I put that here. One over r total equals two pi over rho integral dx and x goes from zero to point five ln and then r two is my y function. So ln of my y function is equal to my slope, which is um, 0 0.0006, okay? <clears throat> so that's going to be 0 0.0006x plus my y-intercept, which is 0 0.0003. And then I have minus ln of r1. So you do need that. So minus ln r1. In this case, R1 is staying the same, so it's going to be 0.1 millimeters. So that's the thickness of the inner wire. I could also have the thickness of the inner wire changing, and then I would have a certain function here, okay? And then you would integrate that. So I could have both of them changing or just one of them changing. So I could have, in this case, it'll just be constant, so ln of 0.0001. Okay, so then you take the integral of that, 0.5. I integrate that, and I get some answer. So 1 over r total equals 2 pi over rho times 0 0.34 So to get the total resistance, I now reciprocate it, rho over 2 pi times whatever that answer was, 0 0.34310.56. So I'm, just, I'm not going to write it again. So uh, I multiply this answer by 2 pi, so it'll be 7.89 nano ohms. That's my final answer, 7.89 nano ohms. You could do similar kind of thing, like I was saying, to any kind of function. You could have the two radiuses changing. Now, how about if the problem was a capacitor problem? you're going to see that it actually comes out to be same method. <clears throat> what if it was a capacitor that was also changing? Okay. So remember, what was the capacitance of a uh, uh, cylindrical capacitor? Well, it was sort of the opposite of the... Uh, it was the opposite of the... Uh, cylindrical resistor. So if the cylindrical resistor was rho over 2 pi L, ln R2 over R1, this one was 2 pi E0 L kappa. So you had the 2 pi shows up on top E0. Kappa is the dielectric constant of the material between length divided by ln of R2 over R1. And then you make the same kind of argument. You say, okay, if you have a, this capacitor here, 
a slit of capacitor, then you have another capacitor, another capacitor, another capacitor. So each one has its own capacitance. We, and you could put DL here. And this time they're also in parallel. But how do capacitors add up in parallel? They add up regularly, right? So I don't need to flip it over. I can just integrate it the way it is. And then the answer would come out very similar. I would do 2 pi 0 dl. dl would be the same as dx. Kappa would be whatever dielectric constant is inside over there. And then ln r2 over r1 would exactly be the same fashion. So if once you know how to do the resistor, you could do the capacitor. Once you know how to do the capacitor, you could do the resistor. So you can see here how to do cylindrical resistors and capacitors with variable uh, radii.